times worse than the beginning. Amen? Amen? But prayerfully and hopefully, as the Holy Spirit indwells us, we become mature enough and not immature, not weak and imperfect, to let that stuff come back in. If you come to church, Bible study, or whatever, once every couple of weeks, and you don't continue with what you're supposed to be doing, what do you expect to happen? The Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of yourself together. Why do you think they say that? There's a strength in numbers. The Bible says a three-stranded cord cannot be broken. Right? We have more than three strands in here. And what we have to remember, too, as we are walking in our spirit-filled life, we have a strand that will never go away. And every time we wrap around that strand, we just get stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm not talking about physical strength. I'm talking about spirit-led strength. Every song we sing and every worship service that we have, if you read the words and pay attention to the words, someone went through something before they wrote that song or that song. Right? You just don't write songs that lead to worship because your day's going great. Right? Read David. How many songs come out of the book of Psalms? Because of David's hurt and pain, but he still knew, Lord, you're still in control. So as we live in the times that we're living, like we just said, the times that we live in can cause us to walk away from a spirit-filled life. <coughs> Simply because we put our eyes on that instead of letting the Spirit keep our eyes on Him. Amen? But, if you have been born again of the Spirit, turn with me to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, and we'll go to verse 3. So wherever we end up when I get back. <coughs> John chapter 3. Keep your fingers on the key. Well, they can't go find it faster than I can, which is possible. John chapter 3. Through the stuff, 
or are you working on it in your flesh? Because your flesh will always tell you, we need to do it this way. Right? But the Spirit says, let me do it this way. Oh, but I don't think you're able because I can't see you, I can't touch you. Sometimes I can't even hear you. And then we get the weak part. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their life. They shall mount up as wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary and walk and not Waiting upon the Lord is a spirit-filled life. You're waiting on power that already belongs to you. You have to exercise it. One one who would think I'm stupid. Well, they might be the stupid ones because you're exercising authority to cast out whatever it is that you're going through. Amen? We put something on the board a few weeks ago, and it said this, if you have time to worry, you have time to pray. Amen? So if you're, if you're so into worrying about your situation, spend more time in prayer, and you'll have less time to worry. Oh, Pastor, that's, you know what? Nobody can do that. Really? How can, how can we do that? By putting your spirit-filled life in front of your flesh life. But don't forget, the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He's not going to make you or ask you to do anything that's going to upset you. But if you allow him to work in your life as he dwells in you, it is the one thing to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, but the Holy but does the Holy Spirit have you? When you come to Christ, and you ask him into your heart, Holy Spirit moves in, but does he have you? Does he control you? Does he, does he give you the things to encourage you? Or are you still riding ramrod over him? And that's when the flesh comes in. When the flesh begins to think they can do it better than the Spirit, because the Spirit ain't moving fast enough, then the Spirit says, oh, well, you know what? I'm still here. We need to be controlled, and we need the Holy Spirit to have us that He may fill you with an abundant life. He wants to fill you with the abundant life that is not found in environment or circumstances. In the environment or any circumstance you find yourself in, will not give you an abundant life unless you're spirit-led, spirit-filled. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me. How do you get spirit-led? First, you recognize the Holy Spirit lives in you. Right? you got a stamp of approval. And the Holy Spirit gives you direction to move in that approval. And sometimes the enemy speaks louder than your spirit because you let him. How many of you remember that? Don't speak to the hand because their ears aren't listening. Remember that? How true is that? I'm not listening to you, devil. Because once I get, let you get into my brain, unfortunately the spirit takes a back seat to my brain. Not that he wants to but that we make him to. The Holy Spirit has to have you, has to be uh, over you. He has to have you totally and 100%. Or the things you may possess, everything that you have, everything that you achieve, the Holy Spirit has to lead you to that possession. Does that make sense? You're driving down the road and you see this car. Right? So your flesh man says, oh, you know what, just, just finance it. Right? <laughs> just finance it. It's going to be okay. And the Holy Spirit says, wait, let's think about your finances. Right? Hey, you know what, folks, it might sound 
kind of silly, but he does that. If you let him. I, I've been on roads hunting with my son and thinking, you know what? We better not go down that road. My dad would say, no, I just don't have the speed to go down that road. Oh, man, come on. No, Rick, I don't have peace to go down that road. And I don't go down the road. And what happens is, a few days later, you talk to a game warrior, and something bad happened on that road. Thank you, Lord. So we have to come to the maturity level to let the Holy Spirit speak to us. And folks, it doesn't come on that. Amen? It does not come on that. Our environment and our circumstances will always try to possess us. We find abundant life. We find peace and transformation by being filled up with the Holy Spirit. Jesus wouldn't have said, I'm going to send you. I have to go away. But I'm going to send you a comfort. I'm going to send you a glory of some transformation. I'm going to send you something that's going to someone that's going to help you through it. And he did. Amen? So, for us to negate that, and for us to not count it as important as salvation, is wrong on our part. Amen? Salvation has been bought and paid for by the blood of Christ. He's given us the ability and the power to walk in maturity as spirit-led, spirit-filled people. I don't like to hear, well, the spirit ain't reverent for today. Really? Tell me where that's at. <laughs> well, the spirit, that, 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 type of, that type of thing died out when, uh, when all the apostles died. Really? Where's, where's that at? He still is important today as he was when he first got sent. When he first, the Bible says, was roaming over the face of the earth.
and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues and the Spirit, as the Spirit was giving them utterance. That speaking in other tongues sometimes scares the demons out of people. It does. Oh, that went away. That, that's no longer for today. Yes, it is. But what you have to understand, there's people that abuse that gift and then after the abuse takes over, it's no longer that big of a deal, is it? So when we when we begin to get that gift in the spirit, don't forget, he already dwells in you. Amen? Then there's gifts that he gives to you also on top of that. And one of those gifts is being baptized in the spirit in speaking in tongues. That doesn't mean everybody can get it. Doesn't mean you're less than anybody else. So 
when they had solemnly testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they started back to Jerusalem and were preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans, no longer. But an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, The road that you send from Jerusalem to Gaza, this is a desert road. So he got up and went, and there was an Ethiopian enough, a court official of Candace, queen of Ethiopia, who was in charge of all her treasure. And he had to come to Jerusalem to worship. And he was returning and sitting in the chariot and was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go up and join this chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, Well, how could I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture which he was reading was this. It was led as a sheep to slaughter, and as a lamb before his shearers to fight it, so he does not open his mouth. In humiliation, he judged what was taken away. His judgment was taken away. Who will relate his generation? For his life is removed from the earth. The Enoch answered Philip and said, Please tell me of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and began from the scriptures. He preached Jesus to him. And as they went along the road, they came to some water, and the Enoch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the Enoch, and he baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord... Think about this for a second. The Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the Enoch no longer saw him, but went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he was passed through and kept preaching the gospel to all the cities until he came to Caesarea. Whoa! Here he is talking to this guy. On the road, baptized in the water, boom, let's go over here now. <laughs> That's a travel preacher right there. <laughs> but let me tell you something, folks. If it can happen then, it can happen now. You know what the difference is? The difference is this. Are you as possessed by the Spirit as Philip was? Are you so engrossed in the Spirit as Philip was? Are you so absorbed with the Spirit as Philip was? Does the Holy Spirit have total control over your life? Because like I tell you folks, nowadays, you know, what do you want me to do? What? This guy looks mean. But let me tell you something, folks. If the Spirit tells you to do it, do it. Sometimes he won't. Sometimes the situation where this is the right timing to do, to speak, to give, whatever. Amen? So, we have to be possessed, empowered, led, and controlled. You are filled with the Spirit that you may have joy. The filling of the Spirit brings you joy no matter what's going on around you. Write that scripture down, you can read it later. Acts 5, 19 and 20. You are filled with the Spirit for service. I think Philip was in service, don't you? How about Stephen? Do you think Stephen was in service? Absolutely. I don't know how many people could stand there and get rocks thrown at them if they weren't filled with the Spirit of God. I don't know how many people could stand there and not say a word, but look up and say, Father, forgive. Amen? You are filled with the Spirit for power to be witnesses. Acts 1 8, which we read, made that block so free to have. You are filled with the Spirit for power to be a witness. Philip was filled with power and witness to a person 
that probably wouldn't have got approached by a normal person. You are filled with the Spirit for the hour of persecution. Acts chapter 7. Turn there with me. Now, when they heard this, they heard what Stephen was talking about. They were cut to the quick, and they began gnashing their teeth in him. Can you imagine what gnashing at his teeth means? He probably heard every word that was a bad word back then. Not to mention blasphemer, you don't know what you're talking about, you're a devil worshiper and all that stuff. But being full of the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Other places the Bible says Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. Do you know why Jesus was standing at this particular point? Welcoming Stephen. Welcoming Stephen to what he's going through. Standing. Standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed at him with one impulse. Can you imagine standing there, saying what Stephen's saying, and making them matter and matter and matter until they finally start coming after him? But they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed at him with one impulse. How many times have you shared the Lord with people that covered their ears? Maybe not physically, but mentally. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him, and the witnesses laid aside the robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. They went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord, Jesus, receive my spirit. Then, falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. There ain't nothing the enemy can do to you that's going to keep you from being face to face with Jesus when you do your job. There's no fear. There's no fear. It's either an airplane or that thing starts falling at 60,000 feet or whatever it's going to happen. Oh man, we're going to hit the ground. Great job, we're going to hit the ground because when I die, I'm going to be in his presence. About time, Lord. <laughs> you are filled with the Spirit that you may walk by the Spirit. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. You are filled so you can walk by the Spirit. Is this helping anybody? But I say, walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit first. Every move you make should be directed by the Holy Spirit. You'll notice that if you try to do it without going that way, something always happens. For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sexuality, idolatry, Sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissension, fractions, envying, drunkenness, terracing, not rousing, and things like these of which I have forewarned you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm going that. Will not. 
inherit the kingdom of God. Will not. What brings him to the will not to the yes I'm going? Love. Love presents it to them in a way that brings them reconciliation, brings them out of condemnation, sets them on the right course. Amen? Will not. There's an opportunity for things that we just read about to be forgiven in their life, and they've already been forgiven if they accept the forgiveness. Amen? How many of you in this room have been forgiven of something? Something that you know you could have been stoned. Or in prison. Or worse. Forgiveness has been laid out for everyone. Now there are some people who are bound, so bound up by the enemy that all you can do is pray that they get unique. All you can do is pray that somehow, some way, God intervenes, send someone to them that gets wrapped up by the church, shake them around, and say, you're blown with us. But folks, it might not be you, it does it. might be someone you don't even know that are led by the Spirit for that moment. How many of you have ever done something years and years and years ago that you're, whoa, that was awesome, and you haven't done it since? You know why? Because you, for that point, then, if that doesn't mean we just said, Lord, use me again. Use me again. And that makes us excited because you never know when that's going to happen. If you're spirit led, spirit fed, walking by the spirit in the abundant life that the Bible has given you by the spirit, nothing will get you down. You are filled with the Spirit that you may be led by the Spirit. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is a powerful, powerful. Yeah. What else? Yeah. What verse is it? Verse 14. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. How many of you in this room, you don't have to raise your hand because I see we all would. How many in this room has allowed the flesh to control what the spirit wants to do in you? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You know, if we rely so much on the law and what the law represents in most people, we will never walk by the Spirit. Because then we become bondage in bondage to the law. And Jesus says, I have not come to abolish it, but I have come to fulfill it. What part of the law? Sacrifice. Amen? Do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. How many of you are thinking right now, man, that's almost impossible. I can't do that. Yes, you can, if you let the Spirit do it in you. But we can't do it in our natural mind. We just, we just heard several verses about flesh, didn't we? The things, for those who are according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who are according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set in the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. 
walk in the flesh and cannot please God. Which one of you is going to go to priority? Which one is right? You need to think. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells, I love that. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, but if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, through, though the body is dead because of the sin, yet the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life to your mortal body through the Spirit who dwells in you. What does dwell mean? There. He's there. He's taking up residence. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh. I love that. We are not under obligation to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting death to death the deeds of the body, and you will live. Your body desires fleshly things, right? This this skin that we're in is just a it's just a cocoon. Right? If we can look into people's spirit there, you'd be a lot bigger than this flesh. It'd be shining and glowing and happy and, and just rejoicing the Lord, and you walk around going, Man, everything's just hate. <laughs> I, I, I need a brand new body. Well, let's just keep the spirit rolling. All who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Out of Father. We've been adopted. How can you be filled with the Holy Spirit? First, you must desire Him to fill you. How can I be filled with the Holy Spirit? First, you have to have the desire for Him to fill you. Now, don't don't get confused here. The Holy Spirit lives in you. Right? But as you put Him on the back burner... He can't lead you and direct you and walk with you and walk before you. You have to be able to say, you know what, Holy Spirit, take me wherever you want to take me. Do with me whatever you want to do. We have to give in a desire for him to do that in your life. Must be evident. Have you ever been to a a, a meeting or a church service or something or you, you, you leave the church there and you go, man, I ain't doing well. No, no, that was bad. I don't know. Did she not feel better? She not. She not not worry about what I did yesterday. Didn't I feel better? Didn't I be full of something? That's what the spirit does. As you as you open yourself up to the word, the spirit will direct your path if you let him. Some of you might need to do this. The Spirit already dwells. He's already there. Amen. When you come to salvation, He's there. Some of us have to, have to say, you know what, Holy Spirit? Show me. Show me. Give, give me. give me a gift. Show me that I know I got power in you. I know you came and eradicated the sin of my life because of the blood of Jesus, but I need some power. Don't get me wrong, folks. There's no more power than the blood of Christ. None. The Holy Spirit will always point to the cross. Always. Because He knows our salvation comes from the blood of the Lamb. And that's what Jesus means when you no longer have to have them, 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 them ceremonies anymore when you put the blood on the goat and take it out in the woods or take the lamb to the altar. You don't have to do that anymore because the lamb that has set you free has already given his life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Second, you must ask him to save you. Now again, I'm not talking about come in and forgive me. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about fill me up with something powerful, Holy Spirit. And let me have some let me have some gifting that I can use. Because the indwelling of the Holy Ghost is already in you. He's already given the ability to overcome sin. Amen? Thirdly, you must believe that he does fill you. Now again, I'm going to reiterate this because you don't hear this all the time. When you come to Christ, Holy Spirit moves in and eradicates all that junk. Amen? Now you're looking for a little bit of special anointing to carry out the plans he has for you. You might not realize this, but if you... If you don't have the power of the Spirit exercising through you, and I'm going to use worship for an example, it will be raw and plain and not uplifting to anybody or anything. But when the Spirit begins to do something in you, there's an elevation that takes place. There's a, there's, there's a desire to kick up your heels and jump up and down sometimes. As black as that looks once in a while. But when the Spirit moves, let Him move. Yeah. Oh man, I don't, I, don't, I don't like the way You know what? It doesn't matter what you like. Let's let the Spirit do what He wants to do. Amen? You must believe that He wants and He does and He wants to fill you up. Hear me, John chapter 14. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, verse 16, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him, but you know him, because he abides with you, and will be in you. He will abide in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and will disclose myself to him. You know, you can almost sit there sometimes and think, man, he, you know, like one of the church, he's kind of an arrogant to you. Right? Tell us what, what, do you, what do you mean telling us stuff like that? The Spirit reveals things to us that brings us to an understanding of what should take place in our life. Amen? So the abundant life is a spirit-led life, a spirit-filled life. Quit looking for your abundance on the outside of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Quit looking for it outside of that. Because He will give you the abundance that you need to be an overcomer in every situation. Fear will not ever control your life again if you're walking after being led by and being consumed by the Spirit. If you think about it, why would Jesus say, I'm going to send you someone that's going to give you a hand? Because he knew that things were going to get out of control, didn't he? And I'm so pleased that the promises are yes and amen for today too. Amen? We are living in a time when we need to be powerful in the Spirit. We need to be led by the Spirit. We need to be filled by the Spirit. And we need to ask the Holy Spirit, give me, a, give me an anointing in an area, Lord. And He will. He will. Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for 
powerful, powerful strength to those who call upon the Lord. And it only comes by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It only comes by us walking and being led by the Spirit. So Father, as we conclude this service today, we pray that in your name that we can reveal more of ourselves to the Spirit who already knows. And help us, Lord, to always address the Spirit. What do I need to do now? I want you in control of my life. Every step I take, everything I do, I want you to be in control of my life. Other people might say, well, you're just kind of lazy. No, I'm waiting for the direction. I'm waiting for the peace that surpasses any and all understanding. I'm waiting for the strength of the Lord to 